Something's just come up. We've received a strange call, and I want you to check it out. Warwick Brown's the best we have in audio-visual analysis, and this gives you an opportunity to work at his side and benefit from his experience. He's in the lab right now. Hey, I hear you're the bomb, rookie. I'm Warwick Brown. I could use another pair of ears on this. Some crackpot called our dispatcher and left a vaguely threatening message. Normally we could trace the call, but it's some kind of blocked number. Prepaid cell phone card, maybe? We do know it was placed within the Vegas phone grid. I got this baby queued up on the computer. Las Vegas Criminalistics Bureau. I've got more work for you to do. I'm sorry. Who is this? You never could keep good people. Who's going to help you now? Can... can I direct you to the... They can come find me themselves. Tell them I'm not done yet. It doesn't sound all that friendly, does it? Click to highlight the parts of the waveform. Let's see if we can isolate any useful sounds. You never could keep good people. Who's going to help you now? Hey, what's up with that? What was that, an elephant? They can come find me themselves. Tell them I'm not done yet. Okay, you got your crowd of people, bells and electronic whistles. That'd be a casino. Recognize the melody right away. Okay, here's where you don't have to be as smart as Grissom. We search for the casinos in town with elephant acts. Seems we got elephants at the Monaco Casino. Only in Vegas. You're the trainer here? Dirty job, but somebody's got to do it. You guys look official. We're criminalists from the Las Vegas Crime Lab. Our dispatcher caught a threatening call we think may have been made at the casino. Here and back. The dirt around this barrel seems disturbed. Must have been moved. But without a warrant, we need an awful good reason to open it. Well, somebody was in a hurry. This may be a long shot, but my gut says we ought to cast this. It's not complete. Might have been smudged by foot traffic. This is doubtful. If our caller used this, we could have traced it. But if Chris was here, he'd say, be thorough. So, we'll be thorough. Nope, but I did step inside for some dinner about an hour ago. I'm just in charge of the animals. Only the transport day manager can give you the permission to open that. Sorry. I don't think we've got time for that. Well, those barrels are owned by the casino, but that one, I'm pretty sure that one was up against the wall a little while ago. You knew in Vegas? Everybody's suspicious in this circus, but I wouldn't say I've seen anything out of the ordinary. Dumbo is not saying much. He's about as helpful as his trainer was. Yes? All you have is a mystery barrel at a casino? Sorry, you know I need something more than that to get you a warrant. Heat signature. Looks like somebody's in there. Let's open it. Now! Oh, damn. This is not good. Looks like our caller just graduated from prankster to murderer. Looks like she's broken out in a rash of some kind. It's concentrated around her nose. Was she sick?
These stains, could be she picked them up from something inside the barrel. But they also could have gotten there when she first hit the ground. Or maybe she was dragged, pulled along, through the dirt, or whatever else she was lying in. The stain looks like soil. Sticky, brownish looking. Ah, good. Hoping to talk to the two of you. Just finished my examination of your victim. Cardiac arrest due to severe anaphylactic shock. Bee sting allergy or similar anyway. No signs of an insect sting, but it hit her respiratory system hard. I'll know for sure after the autopsy, but my educated guess? Death due to a violent allergic reaction to something environmental. Hay fever. Pulled her records after I saw the swelling, the redness around her sinus region. Did a nasal swab. Pollen present. Recent, but hard to figure out from body temp since the barrel could have trapped heat. No rigor mortis yet, so it must have been within the last six hours. Hey, Greg. We need your help, pronto. I'm your man, my man. Dirt's some kind of plant soil, different from the kind you'd find in an elephant pen. Sap. Oh, no offense, guys. Hard to narrow down just what type of tree. Best match I can make is a variety of red oak. What we have here is pollen, but, and here it gets interesting, not from a single species. Quite an exotic mix, really. Pinch of Spanish bayonet, dash of tiger aloe, sprinkle gently with choya cactus, and voila, a sneezer salad. Printed all the ingredients out for you. Check with Brass, though. He can help track all these down. Okay. Not an exact match, but at least we're narrowing this baby down. Somebody driving a small pickup or SUV. That's who we're looking for. Nothing. Either our perp is an anaphis, or these prints are somebody else's. Work this case hard and smart and make it go away. Fast. It's not so much who she was, as who her father is. Carlo Benedetti. She is, was, Sophia Benedetti. Daddy's a major Vegas player, and I'm not talking slot machines. Three casinos on the Strip, including the Monaco, two more downtown, a regional airline, and that's just Nevada. Right now he's in Singapore closing a deal. Numbers the mayor and our governor among his closest friends. So, you know, no pressure, guys. Last night, Sophia never showed up for a fundraising dinner. I got people out interviewing her friends, see what we can turn. Let you know if we get anything but a handful of air. Don't hold your breath. She lived with her parents and were already getting pressed by the family and his honor's office to keep this one under the radar and out of the papers. You give me a good reason, I'll get you in there. Otherwise, sorry. Blackfoot Daisy, Madagascar Periwinkle. Hmm. Not many indigenous to Nevada on this list. Sophia was reported missing yesterday, so it's not possible she could have traveled recently to all of the location sources of these species. You're looking for a garden? Try the desert demonstration gardens. The pollen in the victim's system tells us she may have been here shortly before she died. The greenskeeper reported seeing a woman matching Sophia's description around this area. Let's treat it like a crime scene and process it. Damn, it's locked. It's 
small hair. But we could just be looking at someone's garbage. Tire treads in the dust. Let's take a sample of that dirt back to the lab, have Greg try and match it to the stains we found on Sophia's pants. The grass is flattened here, it's consistent with someone lying on it recently. Yes? Luckily, the follicle was fairly complete. Though I needed the thermocycler to amp the DNA. But I got a stronger sample now. On the other hand, a CODIS surge came up bupkis, and I'm waiting for Doc Robbins to send over the VIX DNA to do a comparison. Want to help speed things up? Go over and get that sample from the morgue. As used tissue goes, this one's fresh. Nasal discharge clear and yellow. Means not a cold. Allergy sufferer, most likely. But I found something else. White powder traces. Drugs? We're not talking coke. Not recreational. Medicational. C5H9N3. Maximine. Experimental drug treatment used in clinical trials. Serious health issues. Malignant melanoma, certain forms of leukemia. What we have here, children, is soil. Perfect for our prickly pal, the cactus plant. Now prepare to adore me even more than you already do, for I have matched the sample from the garden to the dirt on the Vic's pants. Sometimes the magic works. We got an all-season, standard or the current L160 pickups, which means we've narrowed things down to the few hundred around the state. Well, not definite, but not bad. 70% match to the all-season. Might help us build our case. Was there something you wanted? Cancer? Certainly not. This was a very healthy young woman, apart from her allergies. First, Maximine's a trade name. What you mean is histamine dichloride. It can be hard to detect that drug. We all naturally have histamines in our systems. In this case, however, our victim's levels were off the charts, which would have made her hypersensitive to certain allergic environments. A stroll through a garden could have killed her. Histamine dichloride is still an experimental treatment for cancer. Only pharmacists and patients in clinical trials would even have access to it. Timing is everything. I was just preparing one. Here you go. Hey guys, what's up? So here's the upshot. The victim's DNA matches the mucus in the tissue, thus the tissue is used by the victim. The hair is not a match, but its former owner might have well had contact with the victim, and not long before her death. We know the tissue our victim used had Maximine on it. So whoever wanted Sophia dead sprinkles the tissue with the drug and makes sure she uses it. Walking through the garden, Sophia's allergies kick in big time. She's thrown into acute anaphylactic shock as the histamines flood through her bloodstream. In seconds, she's dead. Hey guys, what's up? Yes? Not that pops up. 
That drug is in phase two. Only a few small test groups around the country. Just one on Town Center Drive in Summerlin. Las Vegas Crime Lab. You're the pharmacist here? Yes, Lita Callisto. Is this an investigation of some kind? Yes, it is, Miss Callisto. It's a murder investigation. We'd like your help. Few questions. Ben the Daddy. I'll check. Nope. We don't have that name on file. On the other hand, she could be one of our over the counter customers. Big part of our business. Maximine. I'm not familiar with that, but I'll take a look. Well, I guess we do carry it. Or anyway, we did. Had one order placed for that product not long ago, but it was filled, picked up. According to the database, Dr. Edward Wilkinson. Not for a while, but he's probably at his downtown office. Anything else? I have to finish some work. I get off soon. Hope I was of some help. Dr. Wilkinson, I'm Warwick Brown from the Las Vegas Crime Lab. We've got a few questions for you. Always glad to cooperate with the police, but you'll have to move it along. I have patients waiting. I knew her, yes, in that she was a patient. You do understand, of course, that medical information is privileged. Do you have a court-issued subpoena? Otherwise, I'm not free to discuss my patient's medical history. Maximine. I'm a GP, not an oncologist. What use would I have for Maximine? My second car is a pickup. L160 model. About a month old. You know, I'm not sure how to answer that. There are two spare sets, and my wife keeps one for emergencies. But the other one, about a week ago, I noticed it was missing from my keychain. Maybe it fell off. It must be in the house somewhere. In my garage at home, of course. Like I said, it's a second car. I, I did take some firewood out to my ranch recently. It it's the first time I actually hauled anything in it. My wife and I were together, grocery shopping. It's a little ritual. Every week, something we do as a couple. I suppose she can back that up? Ask her. She should be at home right now. Be my guest. Yes, may I help you? Warwick Brown, Mrs. Wilkinson, Las Vegas Crime Lab. Your husband suggested we speak to you. What would you like to know? It's in the garage. Go ahead and look. You don't need a warrant. No one here's done anything. If you mean, has Edward ever violated doctor-patient confidentiality, absolutely not. We're close, Edward and I, but his professional ethics, well, they're impeccable. I have nothing to say where that little tramp is concerned. That little tramp, Mrs. Wilkinson, has been murdered. That's why we're here. I don't wish that on anyone. Murder. But some people bring bad things on themselves. Look, you're gonna find out anyway, so I'll tell you. She tried to come between Edward and me. She was a spoiled brat who thought she could have any man she wanted. Oh yes, and there were plenty of witnesses at the grocery store where we were shopping. Is my husband in some sort of trouble? Do you have reason to think he might be? Of course not. Edward is as wonderful a husband as he is a physician. And you must know what an outstanding reputation he has in this community. As advertised, it's an L160 4.6 liter V8 engine. Standard transmission. Nice wheels for a second car, huh? Only a couple hundred clicks on the odometer. Tires. All seasons. Wood chips. Well, that backs up Wilkinson saying he hauled firewood in the truck. Receipt for firewood. 
Remember the good old days when you chopped your own? No date on it, but the order was phoned in. If need be, we can ask Brass to pull phone records for us and find exactly when the good doc called in the order. Thick and sticky. Greg will tell us what it is. Yes? This is your everyday, run-of-the-mill, red oak sap. Now, the sap you brought from the truck matches the sap on the Vic's clothes. Very likely she was in the back of the pickup. Little bits of oak, dried apparently. Firewood. All season tires from Wilkinson's truck. Not a big surprise. It's a perfect match to the tracks from the garden. The dock, or the dock's truck, that is, has spent some time here recently. They follow Sophia in the gardens and wait. Before they know it, the prey passes out. They toss her in the back of the truck and drive her lifeless body to the casino loading bay. There, they slide her body off the bed and into a barrel. Of course, this whole theory fizzles if Wilkinson picked up the firewood after Sophia's murder. We should prove that wasn't the case. Getting a lot of pressure from the mayor's office on this one, as you might well expect. So, we put some extra resources on it. A worker at the Desert Gardens claims to have found something important. And Grissom is checking that out. He'll brief us when he gets back. Meantime, keep at it. Let me pull his cell phone records and see. He called for that order three days ago. But wait, just one minute. He was placing several calls a day to that pharmacy for a while there. That pharmacist and Wilkinson may not be telling all just yet. I think we can get much more than an interrogation, but that's a good place to start. Solid work, guys. Ms. Callisto, we would like to ask you a few more questions. Yeah. We'd like you to fill in a few of the blanks you left last time we talked. No, but I was before last week when he got paranoid about his wife finding out. Typical of the breed, you know. Promise me the moon, then weasels back to wifey. Now I don't exist to him. Who cares? Last week, you say? That's about the time the doc's spare truck key did a David Copperfield and vanished. I'm sure that would be fascinating to someone who gave a damn. He scribbled, I read his lousy writing, filled his prescription, he picked it up. I saw it parked outside the hospital last week. Nothing unusual about it? It's a pickup truck. It wasn't the Rose Bowl float. Well, there was some scuffing in the back, dented even. Maybe he'd been hauling firewood or something. Interesting you should bring that up. And I'm sure you'll tell me why. Dr. Wilkinson ordered that load of firewood two days ago. This is so fascinating. I'm starting to wish I took notes. You see, Lita, only somebody who'd seen that truck very recently would know about those scuffs and dents. Maybe somebody who used the truck to haul something heavy. A body in a barrel, say? You're crazy. Do I look like a killer to you? You're starting to. Sure. Knock yourself out. Need me for something? No problem. 
He was playing doctor with Sophia, and his truck was at the gardens. Let's do it. Dr. Wilkinson, we're looking at the evidence and seeing a big arrow pointing in your direction. Make it easier on everyone, and yourself included, and just level with us. What do you say, Doc? It was a beautiful young woman, and she flattered me. Ever hear of a midlife crisis? She was mine. My wife found out, and I realized how foolish I'd been, and broke it off with a girl. I didn't tell you because of how it looked. Does it look now? I know, know I didn't kill the girl. She just didn't mean that much to me, frankly. The evidence tells a different story, Doctor. What? Are you saying... Was Sophia's body in my truck? That's not possible. What kind of a frame-up is this, anyway? It's outrageous! You know about that, do you? Okay, so I have a roving eye, and maybe the rest roves along too sometimes. That doesn't mean I killed anybody. But, uh, look, keep this from my wife, would you? Of course. Haven't I been straight with you here? I'm trying to cooperate. Ask anybody. I take my civic responsibilities very seriously. Yes? Well, she had access to this truck. She didn't love the victim and didn't seem terribly surprised about the murder. A judge will okay bringing her in. Mrs. Wilkinson, you were not the biggest fan of our murder victim. And the details of the crime indicate you may have been involved in the murder. What an outrageous, ludicrous spectacle you people are making of yourselves. Oh, let me see. I believe it was... Oh, yes, that's right. Never. You've never driven it. Your husband says you have a spare set of keys. I do. But I couldn't drive it if my life depended on it. It's a stick shift, and I'm strictly an automatic female. No, can't say I have. She wouldn't be another one of Edward's little chippies, would she? <laughs> if so, she's free to get herself murdered, too, as far as I'm concerned. Why, certainly. Anything I can do to help the forces of justice in their efforts to disrupt our lives, trample our good reputation, and violate our privacy. Yes? I think we can get much more than an interrogation, but that's a good place to start. Solid work, guys. Oh, I'm surprised Edward was shacking up with some poor little rich girl young enough to be his daughter. Yeah, I'm just blown away. Stunned. Did he break it off with you, Lita? To take up with Sophia? That's one of those rhetorical questions, right? You're not really looking for an answer. What can I do for you? No problem. He was playing doctor with Sophia, and his truck was at the gardens. Let's do it. Oh, gee, that's a tough one. I'm a doctor, and she's a pharmacist. How could that ever happen? Yes? Not a match. Hair from the tissue is not Mrs. Wilkinson's. The doctor is out. Hair from the tissue package doesn't match the guy. And we have a winner! Lita's DNA matches the hair found in the tissue. Yes? I think we can get much more than an interrogation, but that's a good place to start. Solid work, guys. Which you seem to find meaningful. I don't. It's meaningful, all right. Meaning you had access to the truck and to the tissue that killed Sophia Benedetti, and you even had a motive. I had a grudge, and I don't. 
It wouldn't be with that little slut. That's right. Your grudge was with the doctor, not his rich girl patient. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it went something like this. That was an opportunity you were prepared for. You already forged the Maximine order in Wilkinson's name and sprinkled some of the stuff on a tissue pack, unaware a tiny hair of yours had drifted down onto one of them. The day Sophia went to the gardens, you gave her the package of tissues. She thinks you're being nice, but really, you've just signed her death sentence. You leave the pharmacy and go out to Wilkinson's and borrow the truck. You know he and his missus are on their weekly grocery trip. Just a matter of time, right? Before Sophia's allergies kicked in, and she'd wipe or blow her nose with one of those deadly tissues. You were right there and waiting, ready when she collapsed. And you drove over and slid her up on the truck bed and into the barrel. The drop-off at the casino didn't take long, and no one noticed as vehicles were coming and going. The truck was back in the garage before the Wilkinsons could even know it was missing. You're a smug pair, aren't you? You killed a young woman just to get back at your ex-lover. What's more smug than that? Stop. I'll bust out crying. Can I get you a tissue? Good job. Another sicko off the streets. Strange, though. I don't get why she tipped us about that body to begin with. It almost feels like she was playing with us somehow. Anyway. Well, Rookie, Grissom's still out in the field, so I'll do your review on this case. Looks like you left no stone unturned. Too bad Grissom couldn't be here to see this.